there's an attack which keeps happening again and again and again. This kind of attack has been responsible for over 200 million dollars of hacks and this is a completely avoidable hack. This kind of hack was the reason why Ethereum chain was soft forked for the first time ever and we have two chains now one called ethereum classic and the other is the ethereum that we know and love this is called a re-entrancy attack gm 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 what's up clubbers in today's video what we're going to learn is how do we avoid re-entrancy attack what is a re-entrancy attack how does it work and how do we make sure that our smart contract is not prone to this kind of an attack but before we get started please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't if you want to send me a message please leave it in the youtube comments i also have an email id that is set up in my about page on youtube so go check that out if you have a specific question come join my discord server there are a bunch of people just like you and me who are trying to help each other out all right with that said let's get started so the first thing that we will do is we'll understand how re-entrancy attack works. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a smart contract called bank. Now this smart contract is nothing but a bank. We store our ETH in the smart contract and we retrieve our ETH whenever we need. All right. So the first thing that we need is a mapping of address Oops. and the amount of ETH the address has deposited which will be u into 56 uh, let's make this public and it will be balances the name of this mapping is balances next we need a function called deposit and this function is an external payable function uh, what we'll do is we'll call this function to deposit any sort of ETH that we have so we will just um, increase the the balance of our message dot sender all right by and we will increase the balance by msg dot value now of course since we can deposit our balance we also need a way to withdraw our balance so what we'll do is create a new function called withdraw and uh, let's just let's just be an external function now in the withdraw function what i want is first my balance so my balance is msg dot sender this is my balance now that I have my balance, what I will do is I will send the balance back to my own address, like to the msg.sender. Now, how do we do that? We write msg.sender.call and uh, because we are sending some value, that value will be bal and nothing else. We don't need anything else. We also need to add a uh, simple quotes over here and this thing returns a boolean success and some other thing that we don't need to worry about all right so if this call succeeds the success will be true so what we do is we write require success else failed to withdraw all right uh, we will also make sure that you know our balance <laughs> is greater than zero otherwise how will we withdraw and lastly once the withdrawal has been done uh, what we need to do is write balances msg dot sender and we will set our balance back to zero basic stuff till now uh, let's just um, go ahead and deploy this and test this out so i've clicked the deploy button and you can see that you know i can sort of um, let's say etherwise I want to add deposit to ETH so I'll just click on deposit and once the transaction succeeds the balance sort of changes to 2 ETH over here and you can check my balance and it is 2 and then 18 zeros okay so as per this I have 2 ETH if I withdraw it uh, the transaction succeeds now I have 0 and you can see my account has back to 99 uh, let me just do it one more time this time I'll deposit 3 ETH so this time the the smart contract itself owns the three ETH uh, out of which three ETH is mine. You can see that now I, I have 96 ETH and if I withdraw smart contract now has zero ETH and I've gone back to 99. Okay, so this thing works. Now, how do we attack this? Do you know? Do you see what, what is happening? The, the main part is msg.sender.call. Now what this does is it sends the ETH 
back to the sender it basically sends this eth to the sender but if the sender is a smart contract what it can do is it can run a fallback function whenever it receives eth so let's just do that and see where it goes so i already have an attack.sol file and now we are going to attack the bank all right so i've imported bank and i will need um a bank this variable all right so i'll get this variable from the constructor and we'll have the bank address and from this what we'll do is write bank bank underscore bank okay so we have a reference to the bank now is the fun thing so now we create a new function called attack all right this will be an external payable function now what we do is we deposit um let's say one eth back to the bank so what we do is bank dot deposit and we want to deposit one eth well to deposit one eth what we'll do is just write value one ether okay i mean good idea to just make sure that we are actually um, sending more than or uh, equal to one ether all right now that once we have deposited what we'll also do is we'll withdraw in the same function just on the next line so what happens is it deposits one ETH and then suddenly it withdraws it back. Now, when it withdraws it back, uh, what will happen is bank.sol will call this attack.sol and it will just send ETH. So now there's a function called fallback function that we can write. And if I just go ahead and do this, this is what the fallback function looks like. Now we will get a warning all over the place uh, with the fallback function. And that is because in the newer version of Solidities, we have two kinds of fallback functions, the fallback that you're seeing and the receive function. All right. So now the fallback function is called whenever the smart contract gets a request with ETH and with or without ETH actually, and it has some data associated with it. But receive is called when there is no data associated with it. So technically, we are not sending any data. So this will basically uh, send this directly to the receive function. But if we don't create a receive function, it will go back to the fallback function. Now the problem with receive function is I don't think uh, I was able to reproduce a, a, a function where, you know, I was able to call back from the receive to an outside uh, smart contract. So we have to like, like you know, learn to live with, the, with these warnings and just move forward. So now in fallback function, what we will do is first, we will check whether the bank has a balance, like the whole smart contract has a balance of more than one ETH. All right. So to do that, we will just write address and bank dot i believe balance and then this should be greater than or equal to one ether if it is the next thing what we'll do is call bank dot withdraw once again all right so if it has more than one ether we are just calling the withdraw function again and again till it does not have more than one eth all right so now that once this is ready it and it has already compiled uh, you can see that it is giving us the warning to add the receive function you can just simply ignore it what we will do is also just you know deposit let's say to eth to the contract with our address all right now the next thing that i want is to add this attack.sol it requires the bank address so i've copied the address and i'll paste it over here and let's just uh, switch things up let's just do it from this account so now that I have this attack.sol ready, I deploy it. And now attack.sol has been deployed. Now, what I need to do is just do one ETH. All right. If I do one ETH, you can see that currently the bank has two ETH. Okay. And uh, that is because uh, this address has sent two ETH. All right. Now, if I just click on attack with one ETH, what we will do is first deposit one ETH and then withdraw one ETH. And then we will go back to the fallback and do it, I believe, three times until we cannot withdraw anymore. Okay. So let me just click attack. The attack has been successful and you can see 
that the balance of uh, the bank uh, i believe you can see it now the balance of bank is 0 eth and our balance is 3 eth even though we only provided 1 eth so this is how we execute a re-entrancy attack now this is something that you need to understand so that you can in the future not make this mistake now how do we prevent re-entrancy attack there are primarily two ways to do that one is you know use something called a re-entrancy guard whenever there is a possibility of interacting with a smart contract that is outside like not the same smart contract that you're working with all right so there's this uh, nice library by um, open zeppelin which is called re-entrancy guard so what you can do is you can simply uh, copy this and go back to the bank all right you go back to the bank you import this okay once the import is done you need to just do re is re uh, i believe entrancy guard and then with re entrancy guard what you have is uh, that you get a modifier called non reentrant all right so what you can do is just add this non reentrant modifier in the withdraw function okay now once you do that and you know you remove all these once you do that you add bank.sol you deploy that and this time let's say you deposit um, 5 ETH and again you go to uh, I believe the attack and then you deploy the attack as well with the new bank address and you call it with let's say something else uh, with 1 ETH uh, if you you know attack it with 1 ETH this time you will see that the transaction failed and why did it fail because when it tried to send it uh, it tried to make a call back and when it made a call back it received an error and why did it receive an error because of the non reentrant guard and if you see the code uh, what it does is it has this um, status called you know underscore status and it is initially set as non not entered which is one so whenever you know this method is called what happens is first we call the non reentrant before where you know it sets the status as entered and then it generally allows the the method to call like to run the method normally all right and after the method has completed running it uh, sets the status back to not enter but if a method calls it back the modifier you know starts running again from the beginning it has already set its value of status to entered uh, and if it is you know set again to it is trying to set again to entrant entered sorry it is giving us an error so this is why you know this gives us an error all right so this is one way how you can do this now what is the another way the another way is if you don't want to use a re-entrancy uh, guard uh, you can just remove it what you can do now is always make sure to update your state before interacting with something else so uh, to do that what you will do is just do this you can copy and paste the state update uh, before you know you actually interact with the contract so once you do that you will see that you know it's uh, it, it updates the state and then it goes back to the message.sender when it comes back to withdraw from message.sender uh, it checks what is the balance which has been already set to zero so the require will give us an error okay so let's just try out this one as well i create a bank and um, i create the attack like this great uh, so i'll just put in let's say three eth again to the bank and with a different guy uh, i'm going to attack this with one eth and hopefully this should give me an error and you can see that it gave me an error called fail to withdraw so always make sure whenever you're there's a chance of interacting with some other system some other smart contract you update your state before you finally you know withdraw or interact with the smart contract if you don't want that you can use a non reentrant guard for whenever you are interacting with other smart contracts in cases like 
uh, withdrawing ETH, withdrawing ERC20 tokens, withdrawing NFTs always add a non reentrancy guard and it's a pretty simple to use non reentrancy guard. All the links to this code to the reentrancy guard will be available in the description down below and I hope you audit your contracts before you publish them if they are going to hold something of value if you watched the video till now please let me know in the comments how i did if you did not like the video please let me know where i fell short if there was something confusing please let me know in the youtube comments if you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you have it and if you have a specific question come join my discord server there are a bunch of people just like you and me who are trying to help each other out i hope to see you again next week till then bye bye